Meanwhile, colleges across the country are under pressure to condemn rising anti-Semitism. Many universities are saying that they're not doing enough. Are, may, excuse me. Many are saying that universities are not doing enough to protect Jewish students. We've been talking a bit about that. I want to add Christine Rosen to the conversation. She's a senior fellow at American Enterprise Institute. Excited to talk to you, so I'm like tripping over myself. Uh, here's an open letter to Harvard. This was signed by 1,600 plus alums. We never thought that at Harvard College we would have to argue the point that terrorism against civilians demands immediate and unequivocal condemnation. We never thought we would have to argue for recognition of our own humanity. Are letters like this packing a punch? They are, and thank goodness they are. It's been five weeks since the attack on October, on October 7th, and I think what a lot of people, alumni of these colleges, former staff and faculty, and parents whose kids are interested in applying to them are realizing is that this double standard in terms of the colleges protecting their students is so blatant, so obvious, and the moral equivocation that's going on among administrators and college presidents so egregious that something has broken and people are fighting back. I think it's good that donors are doing this. I think it's excellent that alumni are doing this. And it's not just Jewish students and Jewish alumni and Jewish right. donors. It's across the, the board. When the donors, like a, a, a Bill Ackman, right, a big donor, mm -hmm. it, when he says something, I imagine that they pay attention. Yes. And, but are, do you see any evidence that any of the universities are changing or taking a different tactic? It's a good question. Now, we're seeing little hints of it. Uh, I think it's some of it is too little too late. Columbia University, for example, has suspended some of its Palestinian student groups who were attacking Jewish students. We do see on campus um, one side of this debate is masking its faces and committing acts of assault and violence and hate speech. And the other side is holding vigils for hostages. So it, again, the contrast is clear. But what I would encourage a lot of these universities to do is to start thinking long term. How are you going to solve this problem? This is a systemic problem for a lot of these places. So, for example, Columbia suspends these two student groups that have been uh, assaulting students and, and saying terrible things for, I believe, about a month. They instantly go on social media and say, well, watch our actions. They're going to follow our words and watch Columbia. Thinly veiled threats. So they obviously aren't, the student groups aren't taking this as any sort of punishment. So this is fine for now, but these are stopgap measures. These universities need long-term plans to solve the problem of anti-Semitism. Well, it might not help when you have somebody like former President Obama with remarks like this. Take a listen. You have to take in the whole truth. And you then have to admit nobody's hands are clean, that all of us are complicit to some degree. And Bill Maher, he'd had enough of that conversation. This is what he said this weekend. I am struggling with people's moral equivalency still. I mean, Barack Obama, who has rarely disappointed me, did so this week. The attack was only a month ago. A more savage attack than we've ever seen in reverse. There's a big difference between collateral damage and what Hamas did. When they fire at Israel, it's a war. When Israel fires back, it's a war crime. A little crazy. Will this conversation filter down to college campuses? I hope so, because to be lectured on complicity by a former president whose own administration deliberately misled the American people about its Iran policy is a little rich. Good for Bill Maher for saying that. And that's actually another part of the conversation. Iran is backing Hamas, Hezbollah, these terrorist groups. And so the moral equivalency point is very important here. We need to be able to say as Americans, as educators, as college presidents, it is not the same thing to, uh, for terrorists to attack innocent uh, civilians as Hamas did to Israelis and then act as if any reaction on the part of Israel to defend itself is, a, is genocide or war crime. These things just simply aren't true. You're a mom. Um, you have teen children. And there are moms that are out there, moms and dads, who are saying, is, what can I tell my children? Or what, where can I point them? What can I give to them to give them more of an understanding of what's happening, rather than them getting maybe peer pressured into going to one of these... Uh, pro-Palestinian rallies. Yes, well, the first thing I would say is uh, get off TikTok. <laughs> there, there is a lot of uh, very pro-Palestinian, pro-Hamas uh, propaganda, basically, on that social media site in particular. Get off social media. Start reading more broadly. There are lots of smaller journals. I write for one of them, Commentary Magazine, Tablet Magazine. There are a lot of places that students can go to educate themselves more broadly. There are wonderful history books. Michael Oren has written a great book, many great books about Israel. They need to broaden their horizons. The, the 
two second video that someone posts on TikTok is probably not going to be your best source of information. I did hear one thing that was positive this week. So a friend of mine, his, her son is a freshman at Northwestern and some kids were doing a die-in, right? And he said that all the st other students were just stepping over them as they went to class and ignoring them. And that also might be a way. Voting with your feet, yes. I Christine agree. Rosen, follow her, a commentary magazine at AEI. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.